Okay, greetings everyone, this is First Centurion 753 with the next episode of Geopolitical Simulator 4, Power and Revolution. A neoliberal approach to Brazil. And in the last episode, I believe we made a number of trade deals with the United States um, and Ronald Trump, their president. Uh, some of these trade deals, Kem, Kem has gotten a good assessment, but the other ones have gotten moderate assessments. But I think there's some things, one, A, we can do uh, to actually improve these trade deals. B, I'm going to go ahead and look at these trade deals and try to uh, figure out, um, try to show you why uh, they're still moderate assessments and uh, how we can make better trade deals in the future. Uh, so we're going to analyze these a little bit. Again, and we're going to continue to go with a neoliberal approach, uh, which means that we are going to uh, reduce spending and regulation, uh, eventually lower taxes, but I do want to get a balanced budget going on, and um, we're going to be promoting uh, political and economic freedom, less government intervention in the economy, uh, less central planning, less disruption, and let the market forces uh, drive the economy. And again, this is a neoliberal approach based on uh, 20th, 20th century philosophy and neoliberalism, which uh, actually can be divided into two different schools of thought. And again, I am not an economist in any way, you know, so I'm not an expert at any of these. Um, I'm just giving a rough overview. I'm really just a, a high school history teacher playing a video game here. So, uh, but um, the first school of thought with the neoliberal philosophy is uh, the Austrian school. And it uh, is more towards the early part of the 20th century, and it's based on theories of F.A. Hayek, Frederick von Mies, and uh, others who are uh, Austrian scholars who um, have the idea that government should not intervene in the economy and that people are the best to determine how efficiently... Um, to run business and run the economy, all right, because they will maximize it in order to uh, gain the most profit from the market, all right. And uh, you know, this theory basically, um, one of the biggest uh, proponents of this theory throughout history is the failure of the Soviet Union, basically, with the centralized system that they had in the Soviet Union, um, where they're basically trying to. Uh, manage, micromanage the entire economy, and obviously this is a disaster in such a big country, there's no way for people in Moscow to be able to uh, micromanage every aspect of the economy. One quick example from uh, an economics class that I teach, uh, the quota system that they had in Russia uh, was at one point measured by tonnage, so they would take all of the products produced in a factory, they would put it on a, uh, a train, and they would weigh the tonnage to see if the factory met the actual quota. Well, this led to certain instances in the Soviet Union where products became actually very heavy just to meet the quota. So they weren't producing a lot, they were just producing very heavy products. One example of this, there were lead lamps in the Soviet Union, lamps that were made out of lead uh, so they could be heavy enough to uh, meet their quota because that was the only incentive really was to meet the quota and then they got some sort of bonus. But if you went above your quota, then uh, you obviously were expected to produce more the next month. So that uh, quota system, that centralized planning system, was a complete disaster, that communist system. But uh, the capital system, which is driven, uses markets to determine price, uh, is really what uh, is driving this whole neoliberal school. Um, and the Austrian school, neoliberal philosophy, and the Austrian school of that philosophy encourages le less, less amount of government intervention, the better. All right, the less they, the government intervenes, the more businesses will be able to uh, sort out how to better produce and optimize things. Um, now, the other school of thought is uh, the Chicago school of thought. There's Chicago. And I think Hayek actually studied in Chicago for a while. Um, but um, one of the big differences between the Chicago school and the Austrian school deals with monetary policy. I think I mentioned it's in the uh, last episode, monetary policy deals with currency and interest rates. There's one way to actually manipulate monetary policy. 
and fiscal policy is your budget and your taxation. And so both of them say that the government should really not be involved. They should try to lower taxes as, as much as possible um, and get very little involved in intervention and everything. As you can see here, some of our biggest expenditures are Social Security, uh, education, and debt reimbursement. I'm going to really try to lower this debt reimbursement um, by getting a balanced budget. Right now, looking at the budget deficit, we had uh, started with a deficit of $35 billion, down to $12 billion. That was with the health care reforms. And I'm going to go ahead and reform a couple other areas here. Uh, maybe, I think, work and possibly education. I have a number of steps to reform things there. Um, but going back to the uh, difference between the Chicago School and the Austrian School, uh, Milton Friedman, who is uh, one of the leading, proponent, leading, leading uh, scholars of the Austrian School, uh, argued um, that interest rates are controlled by money supply. Or not, the inflation or monetary policy is controlled by money supply. And who controls, who prints the money? Basically, that's you know, the governments, all right? So since the governments print the money, they do have some sort of intervention and, you know, not realizing that is a flaw. And, that's, and so Milton Friedman argues that the government can intervene through monetary policy and adjust interest rates, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to use interest rates to try to, um, you know, reduce inflation as best as possible. And that's the one way we're going to intervene. Other than that, I'm really going to try to cut spending, cut taxes, and not try to be involved in the economy as much at all. Uh, again, the two goals are to drive the economy up to ten billion dollars, trillion dollars, excuse me, this is uh, 1.9 trillion because it's in billions, so we're, the goal is to get ten trillion dollars GDP as well as become a South American uh, hegemon. And I'm going to do that through a little bit of a secret service and intervention policies there. We're also going to try to promote free trade, uh, who I think both of them both schools would like free trade? I know the uh, Chicago school is pro-free trade. Um, I'm not sure about the Austrian school exactly. Um, but again, if you want to read more about these uh, two philosophies, I'm going to post uh, two books, a couple books, in the description. Um, Milton Friedman's uh, Capitalism and Freedom, which I think I posted in the last one in the description there, as well as uh, F.A. Hayek's Road to Serfdom. Uh, those are two books that articulate uh, the two different schools, really, of uh, neoliberal, uh, neoliberalism uh, as far as an economic ideology. So if you're interested in reading up and learning more about those two, uh, again, I'm not, a, I'm not an economic philosopher, so if you want to learn more, I encourage you to read on your own. Uh, but if you can click on the link below and buy the book uh, through Amazon, through my link, then I will get a commission, and that will help to uh, continue this channel. Because, again, I think I've mentioned this in a couple of the recent videos, uh, revenue is not as much, and while it is the summertime and I'm off right now, I'm not sure how much longer I'll be able to continue to do this if I don't start making more money on YouTube. So, uh, you know, you have to maximize uh, your time, just like Hayek would say, Let, leave, leave it up to the individual. Uh, but you guys can help me maximize my time by... Uh, helping me with affiliated marketing and going to click on those uh, links if you want to buy some more books. I'll also post uh, Adam Smith's uh, Wealth of Nations too if you guys are interested in buying them. So also I'll post the link to the game um, as I will in all the other videos that I have. Uh, so uh, I'd really appreciate any support you guys can give. Thank you for that. Alright, on to the episode. Uh, first step we're going to take is going to do, do deal with labor reform. And labor reform is going to be, uh, since we don't want the government intervening, we're going to let people uh, survive on their own. It's employment agency right here. We're just going to cut that a little bit. That's going to create $1.6 billion, uh, billions of dollars of revenue for our um, government. All right, but the people might not stand for just cutting this alone. So we are going to reallocate funds, uh, but we're going to take a lot of these funds we're going to take some of it and add to the um, revenue, but we're also going to use some of it to help some out, help out some other areas here. And we're going to take uh, checks on gender equality in the workplace. We'll make sure that's, you know, because that's just law, basically. And that's justice. And Adam Smith said that, you know, the government can spend money on, on justice, preserving order, and, and so does child labor, because that's just inhumane. Okay? You know, just because they're... Just because... Just because we're not giving out handouts to everyone doesn't mean that we're cruel, 
you know, monsters here or anything. Uh, interrogation, integration of handicapped in the workplace. Again, it's law, uh, it's justice, and, you know, Adam Smith said the government can spend money on that, so we're going to go ahead and do that. But, you know, we don't need employment agency. We're gonna, people can find their own way. So let's go ahead and uh, initiate that adjustment, which will give us more of a budget, uh, more revenue in our budget. Uh, it's going to help out, but one thing it is going to create a problem with is it's probably going to cause a little bit of employment. That's okay, though. Um, unemployment um, is really low right now, 0.1, and so we're probably going to be getting, getting some immigration coming in because of this. Um, but I'd like to create more jobs. I'd like to create more jobs and I'd like to expand, and our growth rate right now is at 2%. Uh, so in order to continue to expand, we're going to need more workers. And so um, what I'm going to do to create more jobs is we're going to go and we're going to create more trade deals. So let's go ahead and look at these trade deals real quick. And I just wanted to show you guys the actual assessment of the trade deals. Um, this is for automobiles. This is for the United States. Uh, it, cr it generates $16 billion dollars of GDP through trade, which is a good thing, uh, but there are some good, there are some pros and cons here. Uh, for the first thing, a pro, um, this contract will let us sell at a much uh, higher price. We got a good price by going with the United States because things are very expensive in the United States. That's the best market in the world, probably. Uh, the contract will allow us to sell a portion of our product. It didn't get all of it. I think we're producing something like, uh, if you saw it there, all right, they are automobiles. I forgot how much we're doing in automobiles. I have numbers for iron in my head because uh, that's the one we're going to look at next. But uh, automobiles, that's not the full surplus that we have there. Um, so uh, we probably sell more automobiles. However, if you go down here, look at profits, the product is not very profitable. Increasing its production is not in the best interest, not our best interest. So we're not going to actually do that. We're not going to, we're going to stay away from automobiles. Uh, I'm not going to worry about automobiles. We'll leave that profit alone. That, uh, that deal, that contract alone. Iron is one we are going to look into here because I think we have a total production of about 250 uh, million tons of iron, but this contract only does 57, all right? So it's only a portion of our product, but it is particularly profitable, all right? And selling it will bring even more profits. So we're going to look to sell iron in two other countries around the world. Um, in other countries around the world. All right, chemical industry, this is the best contract that we have. According to this assessment, all right, uh, everything, oh, not everything, there's a size, of, this contract is quite sizable and will consider to strengthen our economy. Large portion of our product, but manufacturing the product will, let's see, manufacturing this product, product is profitable, uh, that exporting it will not destabilize the economy, but doesn't create a lot of jobs. And I think I saw that iron didn't create too many more jobs either, but uh, we're going to try to generate more GDP at this point. And if you go into the iron industry, we're going to check out, where is iron? There you are. Okay, world industry. I'm going to get the numbers here by tons. All right, there we go. 245 uh, million tons. Uh, our domestic consumption is about 30 million. I think we have like 57, 60 million. So we've still got a good portion of the surplus that we can sell off. And to find out who's got the best price, uh, let's go back to ours real quick. Where was ours? Our price is 150. That's our purchasing price. Our sale price, which I think is the consumption price, is 118. So an even higher sale price would be better. So who's got the best price here? Uh, Australia's got the best price. However, they have enough production to match their consumption. United States is next, and we made a deal with them, but they didn't want to sell off too big of a portion. That's uh, Ronald Trump's policy there, probably anti-trade policy. Iraq has got a very small portion. They're not going to be able to buy a big significant amount. Uh, they're next on the list. Saudi Arabia, still not a lot. Spain seems to have a lot. and seems to have a good uh, price there. So Spain's going to be one that we're going to go to, and I think the next one's going to be the United Kingdom. So we're going to set up con uh, meetings with uh, the United Kingdom, and this is for next week, right? Next week, United Kingdom and Spain. We're going to set up meetings with them to try to sell some iron, maybe some other products too. I think I saw fuel might be another one that I looked at for uh, England or something like that. Fuel uh, detailed assessment here. We're only selling a portion so we can still sell more of that. Uh, again, it's not very, it doesn't create a lot of jobs like you saw down there. Contract will not have a significant amount of unemployment. 
Uh, but it does bring in a pretty decent revenue. It's $14 billion GDP, so that'll simulate our GDP. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is these things are all, these contracts are all done in dollars, right? And if you look at, back to the currency and the monetarism manipulation, exchange rate with the US dollar is 31 cents. What I want to try to do, if I can bring down inflation by raising the interest rates, um, I might be able to strengthen my dollar versus the US dollar. And if I do that, then I think those contracts will improve, I think. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna try to do as far as monetary policy. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. We, we already uh, imposed those new improvements on uh, the market, not the market, on the employment policy. Um, and this is gonna cause an impact. All right, so we had a small bump here. Uh, 5.8 bump here. We got the uh, number of groups seem to like it. Public finance. It's good for public finance that we have the adjustment already. We have an uh, issue with human rights because we took away some of the uh, employees, but social, young people, family, women, handicap, all like it. Employment's not too thrilled. Uh, but I already brought it down about uh, $2 billion there. Already declined. So I don't know if that was from the last, uh, from the trade deal still. Your commitment to defending family values. So let's go ahead and set up a meeting with her. And uh, we'll get an endorsement from her and try to boost some more popularity that way. That's the family values. That's because of the, the child labor law improvement. So uh, things are going pretty well. We're up to 74%. There you go. Latest unemployment figure uh, is going down. 0.1. Okay, good. Uh, off to a good start. The Speaker of the House says that we're off to a good start. Uh, congratulations, you have succeeded in coaxing the National Assembly into an agreement. Did I get a bill passed? I don't remember passing a bill. Uh, law and history. Oh, we did. Change limits of head of state. Oh, look at that. Uh, we extended the term. I forgot I did that. Finding funds. All right, we should think about, uh, party's financial resources. So we should go to, uh, the billionaire. Businessman. Billionaire. Right-wing billionaire is not happy with us, but the left-wing is. That's odd. We'll meet with him and uh, meet with him now. I'll take his money now before he starts to hate us. Uh, here we go. We got the meeting with uh, what's your face? Champagne. I'd be happy to. Charming. Yes. Proud of you. Speak out of me. Okay. All right. Looks good. Your commit. All right. So a little bit of a bump there. And popularity should be coming. And um. Next thing I want to do is look into Secret Service. And we're going to look into the exterior, manage these networks. Recruitment. The National Defense does not have enough men to fulfill its mission. All right, we'll work, deal with that later. Uh, China, we're industrial spying. I'll keep that for now. France. Actually, France does have French Guyana, which is on our border. So I'm going to keep those agents there. Out of Iran, out of Iraq, out of Israel. Out of North Korea, out of Pakistan, out of Russia, Saudi Arabia. I'm going to keep them in Taiwan. Like I said, I'm going to go after some Asian tigers that have a lot of wealth. I'm going to try to avoid upsetting any... There's our statement in the press. 0.5 bump. Not a lot. I'm going to try to avoid upsetting any of these uh, major power countries. All right, champagne for you. Think it's reasonable. Oh, you don't have any money? Uh, let's see, I don't want you to speak for me. Let's see. You are definitely the most richest and most generous person. It's very kind of you. There we go, good compliment there. And fund the party. Yes. Nice. Yes. Alright, we'll get some cash out of that. And, uh, let's see, France, no, Taiwan? I'd say we bump these agents up to 20, and let's go for... Oh, look at that. I thought they might have some technology. I guess they don't. All right, so let's get rid of them. I don't need them either. All right, so where do we want agents? We want agents in at least five to start. All the South American countries, right? Argentina. Political spy. Changes how the other half lives. Okay, we're not gonna deal with that. Creation of networks. Pop 
Public finance went up. Oh, hold on. I think that's the impact from the... Uh, that must be the impact from our unemployment. Okay. Budget excess. Look at that. $5 billion budget excess. Neoliberal policies are working out at this point. All right. So if we can keep that budget excess until the end of the first quarter, then we should be able to start paying down this debt instead of taking on new debt. And that will reduce a lot of our government expenses, which I think that's... That's that's really what we're looking for here. All right, GDP is over uh, two two trillion dollars. Inflation is down. Unemployment went back up a little bit. We saw that, but growth is coming up now. So things are going very well right now for the economy. Uh, growth was at what five percent? Hold on. Growth is at five percent. I'm gonna keep that for now. Uh, I think when it gets up to 8 or 9, I might raise interest rates. What is our currency? That hasn't adjusted any towards the dollar. Strengthening that currency, I think, may help us out. We already got a little bit of benefit here from fuel. Fuel has gotten a little bit better. Why did that happen? Profitable. Profitability. Exporting. All right, let's see. Maybe we can deal fuel with... Uh, Theresa May here. Iron and fuel is what we're going to try. Not Theresa May. Linda Fay. Coffee. No thanks. Ulcer. Uh, compliment? I hope you didn't make Ooh. me come here to Okay, she's a little hostile there. She seems kind of friendly. Sales contract. Let's see what we got here. Let's make a sale. And iron. We still have a lot more iron to deal on. So. Um. They've got 19 billion. That's 25. Uh, let's see if they'll go f 14. And I'll try to get this up over 200 to start. And they don't want to sell. They want to uh, remain diversified. So they're shrewd economists there in England. Shrewd businessmen. They want to stay diversified. We can only sell them a portion. So we're going to stick with that portion, I guess. Which really isn't going to bring in a lot of revenue. If I can get it over a billion it'll be good uh, we're not gonna get a billion even eh, that's a much better uh, price than we got from Trump there Let's see if I can go 2392 292 no 292 is pretty good that's not even gonna get us over uh, let's see if we can get somewhere right in the middle there that's perfect that's better it's better than what they have Okay, I'll take that deal. That sounds like a terrific deal, actually. Um, hopefully they keep with that contract and they don't default on it. I'm kind of worried about that. All right, so iron didn't bring in a huge profit. Let's see fuel. What does fuel do here? Fuel. Let's see. We already have... We already have a big chunk under contract here. I'd like to sell more. And they would definitely take it. But I don't think I have enough to meet my own consumption. So I'm worried about exporting fuel. Maybe I should build some oil refineries or something like that. Um, sales. Chemical. We probably sold most of the chemical. And they're producing enough to meet their demand. What are the other ones? I forgot utility vehicles and uh, automobiles. Automobiles we're not going to go for, but utility vehicles, they got some. Let's see. That's about 600, 200 puts us at, oof. that's kind of close. Uh, I don't know. More contracts might drive up production a little bit. Look at that, how much money it's going to cost, though. Wow. That's going to bring $23 billion into the economy. I'll really need to uh, drive up inflation, or drive down inflation if this happens. $27 billion. That's a good deal. I don't know if we can meet it, though. Let me just knock this down. That's 691. 
six ninety one seven thirty puts us at one twenty. Sixteen billion dollars still. They kept the same amount. It's good to keep track of that. Fifteen billion. That is sweet. I'll take it. That should really help out, I think. All right. Good deal with the British. Another fifteen billion to the economy. Sixteen billion, really. Hmm. We'll have to wait for a week, probably, till that takes effect. Okay, we got another meeting coming up. This one's going to be with Spain, right? Happiness decline. All right, we got some money transferred into the bank account. Good. Happiness decline. That's because of uh, we cut back on the employment agency, probably. And employment is still pretty low. All right, we're waiting for the next week to go by and recalibrate. Or actually, we got a meeting coming up uh, Wednesday, probably. Here it is, Prime Minister of Spain. Meet with you. And let's offer coffee. Sure. Nice coffee drinkers in Spain. I hope you didn't make me come. Oh, just like the British. All right. Here we go. Sales contract. We're gonna sell them. I sold all the utility vehicles. I could. And now, let's see if we can get a portion of the iron industry. They're probably going to be the same thing. Yeah, I don't like it. Let's see if I can get a good price out of them. Two oh nine. Oh, that's pretty good. I went up a decent amount. 82 that seemed to not move. Let's do 191. Oh, okay, a billion dollars. Sure, let's take it. Yeah, I like it. Sell some iron to Spain. I think that's going to be it for that. I think, alright, I think we're looking good. Military contract. Non aggression pact. No, okay. Alright. All right, so two, three different decent deals total, I guess. Operation. Our infiltrated agent was spotted. Uh, bummer. We're gonna have to spend more money on uh, Secret Service there. And let's take a look at these contracts. More contracts. Eh, they didn't really come out too well. Basically the same. More of the same. Hey, this quantity of sold the contract insignificant compared to our production. Revenue represents contract insignificant compared to global economy. Product is particularly profitable, though. Um, all right, so I guess there's a number of factors that go into these trade deals. Lack of space and education system. All right, I was gonna do uh, educational reform, but I think maybe I'll hold off on that because I still have. Oh, what happened there? Did we have uh, an adjustment there? That dipped a little bit. Okay. Uh, our debt is rising. Probably because of the interest. We're meeting with her again. I'd be uh, charming. Yeah. That's Good. Speak out of me in public. Okay. okay. Alright, well, we still have a balanced budget. Um, let's see. I was going to make some education reforms, but I'm a little worried. Oh, look at that. Chinese network. Two arrested. I should have just pulled out of China. Definitely should have just pulled out of China there. Alright, back to the Secret Service menu here. We are in February. Let's slow down a second. Secret Service. Creation of networks. Um. Who else did I want? I wanted South American countries. Bolivia. Political spying there. Fire that one away. Manage networks. Chinese. They probably got really good uh, counterintelligence. I'm going to pull out of China. 
We're not spending a tremendous amount on the Secret Service budget right now, so it's risky putting a lot of agents in countries. And it looks like we've reached about 30 minutes here. All right, so I um, hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Um, please feel free to comment down below. Uh, please go ahead if you want to learn more about neoliberal theory. Uh, click on one of the links below. Buy one of those books through my channel to help... Uh, raise money and keep this channel going uh, so, you can, so I can create more videos and more time to create more videos um, and um, yeah thanks for your support um, you can also support me on Patreon if you like there's a link on the home channel the channel homepage and uh, thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next episode